Hi everybody, this will be your first video on Siemens PLC programming. We're going to use the Siemens TIA portal software. The link, or the shortcut I should say, on the desktop looks like this. It says TIA, then a V, and then what version you have. So some of you have version 13, some have version 17, I have version 15 right here. You'll have two or three other shortcuts on your desktop that look similar to this. One is the Siemens License Manager, and one is the Siemens PLC, Siemens PLC Simulator. So the one that says TIA is the one that you want to open. And open that, we'll see our Siemens splash screen here. And it doesn't matter how fast your computer is, it's still slow to open. Here is where you're going to set up a project or select an existing project. So we're going to create a new project. We're going to call it video one. And it'll just save it to a default path. Right now it's going to save it in my documents. Okay, we will, we'll call it video underscore one. Great. That is the last time we'll be in this view. We're going to go down to project view right here in the bottom left if I did that too quick. So now you can switch back to portal view or project view. We're going to stay in project view for pretty much all the time. Um, it looks like a lot of windows, but really this main one in the middle that doesn't have anything in it right now and this over here on the side, this is what you're going to be using almost all the time. So we need to add a device because right now we don't have any PLCs in here. So we can add an HMI or PLC. Um, I think you can do drives in this too. So we are going to add a new device. It's going to be a double click. And okay, HMIs, PCs, or controllers. I don't see drives in here. Uh, we have an S7-1200. And I think it's a 1212C ACDC relay. There it is. And then, so this will be in the front. I'll drop a picture in here after I edit this video, but the front of an S7-1200 looks like, and I'll circle where you're gonna find this information on the PLC. Um, it's in the on the front of the processor on the right-hand side. It'll tell you a 1212C, and then the AC, DC, and relay, it's AC powered. It has DC inputs and it has relay outputs. So that's what that means. Uh, this is the firmware revision, and you'll find that on the side. I'll also drop a picture in of what that looks like and where you can find that number. If you look, they're almost identical except for this 30, 31, and 40 right there. And it's a uh, pretty small print on the side of the processor on the, the PLC itself uh, that you'll see which different uh, firmware revision you have. So I'm pretty sure mine's the middle one, but we'll find out when we go to try to go online. It'll say that it is uh, the wrong hardware if it's not the right one. So then it pops up over there and you can see it and it shows information about it. Okay. Now if that added okay, we'll be able to see it in our devices and networks. It's taking a while. If you have a slower computer, this can take like up to 30 seconds after you add that. So you might think that it's not working. It's just pretty slow software. Uh, here it is. So we are in our Devices and networks view. Up here, you can go to topology view, network view, and device view. Hmm. I don't see any, oh, we got to select it up here. There it is. Um, that's it. And then when you're trying to select it from this view, this is a separate module uh, plot where you can add in. I'll drop a picture of what that looks like in here, too. This little square that's blank can pop off. It's a physical piece on the processor, it's a piece of plastic. You can pop it off. And you can put an add in module in there. So you can add modules on the side, and you can add communication modules usually go on the left, and IO modules will go on the right. And this one in the middle, the only ones I've used have been analog inputs and outputs, but I know they make other versions that can uh, click in here in the middle. So we got our processor in there, everything looks good. Um, now, the next thing you're going to want to do is attempt to go online with the processor. Go up here and hit go online. This my setup slightly different than what you're going to see, but it'll be all the same screens. So type of interface, you're going to put PN slash IE, and then you'll probably have a pull down here on the next one to select which controller that you want to use. So you want to use the one that is the hardwired Ethernet card in your computer. So don't select Bluetooth, don't select Wi-Fi. So I only have one Ethernet controller in my computer, so I don't get to choose but you'll probably have a list. So sec select the one that's not wireless, the one that you're actually connecting the processor to via Ethernet cable. And then you'll go down and hit Start Search. So it's going to look on your Ethernet connector for any kind of processors that it can find. 
that are Siemens processors, and it's going to list them down here. So sometimes you'll have a bunch of them. Um, I should only have one because I only have one connected to my network. And we wait. This is real frustrating when you're not getting a connection because every time you do something different to try it again, you got to sit here and wait for like another 30 seconds to see if it worked or not. So it saw it. And right here it says PLC1, S7 1200, and it has the address of the processor and it highlighted it. And if you're not sure which processor, if you're connected to multiple, there's multiple processors listed here, you can select one and hit the flash LED and it'll flash the physical lights on the front of the processor to let you know which one you selected in this list. So if it's just listed like PLC1, PLC2, PLC3, and one's controlling like an infeed conveyor and the middle one's controlling like the main process and the other one's controlling like the palletizing system or whatever, but in here it just says PLC1, 2, and 3, and you're not sure which is which, you can select it, hit flash, and it'll flash it in real life at the actual processor, wherever it's installed on the machine. So you can go verify that you're connecting to the right processor. So we are going to select that one. It's the one we want. We're going to hit go online. And the first time you connect to it, it's probably going to say something. You probably won't get this one, uh, but it'll say something about it has to reconfigure the IP addresses. We're going to say yes. Sometimes it needs to add a subnet to the computer that you're using. Um, an additional IP address was added. Interface real trick. Yeah, so it added an IP address to my computer, which is fine. And orange means we are online with the processor. That is good. These orange over here are not good. It means there's something not the same with what we're looking at in the software versus what's on the processor. Um, so what we're going to do is right click on the processor, hit compile. I'm going to rebuild all. What we're trying to do is get all green over here. So I have a blank program right now that because I just opened a new program, new um, project. So I have no logic whatsoever in this and the processor I'm connecting to probably has logic in it. So it's not the same. So what's on the processor and what I'm looking at on the screen aren't equal. So that's why I'm getting these exclamation points over here. So I compiled the software that I have right now, which is nothing. I have no software. I haven't written any logic in here. Now I'm going to download all the software to the processor. And here, it, if you see a red, it means you have to do something or it's not going to work. So you go stop all. So it's saying, do I want to stop all the modules, all the IO modules while I load this logic into it, which is blank logic. Um, and you have to hit has a warning you have to yeah stop all because what if some of those modules are controlling something that's currently running so i'm uh i don't have this plc connected to any piece of machinery but a lot most of the time it will be connected to a piece of machinery um, some of the stuff that you're stopping might be needed to run for safety or for whatever reason so that's why it's in red and it wants to remind you that you're stopping if you want to load this you need to stop all the processes that are going on external to the processor so now i'm going to hit load and it says it'll take some time, and that's one of the shortest things. There's other things that shouldn't take that long, but they do. Um, hit finish. Yay, now everything's green. So now what's in the process? Or my hardware, so there's a hardware configuration and a software configuration. Um, I'm not seeing it listed on here, but if I added more hardware, it, I have the option to compile my hardware configuration and download my hardware configuration to the processor. Um, the software is going to be down in your program blocks. Come on, there you go. So the only block you have right now is OB1, which is an organizational block. So I don't have any software in here to speak of. Um, but that's what you do. So I'm online with the processor. I'm going to make a series of shorter videos instead of one long one. Um, orange means I'm connected to it. Um, like I'm sending and receiving packets back over the Ethernet. Um, the processor may or may not be in run mode. It'll still be orange. I might not have any logic in the processor. It'll still show orange. Um, orange just means that you're on. So if I go offline up here, you see the purple go or the orange goes away and it goes back to like a purplish blue color. Now you are not online with the processor anymore. Um, I think that'll be that for this video. My next one, I'll show you how to add some tags and add your first function block of logic.